Hey, welcome back to another review in the Toby Hooper Marathon. And this one I got, I was able to see this because it was on Vimeo for free. Eggshells, which is Toby Hooper's first film from 1969. Which, I don't know, it was worth one watch to me. It's not, nothing I would ever see again. Because it's a very arty, artsy-fartsy, experimental movie. I don't think it really has a narrative that you could understand, or at least I, I didn't fucking understand it. But it's it's a very... Sometimes they can bud the shit out of me, but maybe as I grow older, I'm more interested in seeing these kind of movies at least once, because so many movies nowadays feel the same or feel very familiar that when someone does... Or if you find an older experimental film back in the day, at least it's unique. Whether that's good or bad, that's another thing. But at least, okay, there's some unique stuff here. So that's why I said it was worth one watch. But it's it's not really a film I could quote recommend unless you're really into artsy fartsy experimental movies, or you just want to say fucking watch Toby Hooper's first film. But, I mean, it begins, it takes place in Austin, Texas. You have, like, a bunch of folks with American flags. And they have signs, like, the government are violent, but not us. And, like, one of the first scenes is a woman playing with her pimple. And I don't even know if we see that woman again. Like, the woman that we see in the first five minutes. I don't even remember if she's in the rest of the movie. But, like, you see these big demonstrations of hippies, you know, shaking hands with cops. Tons of people in the streets, and then like this group of people go to this house, and it's not a horror film at all. And then just weird stuff happens. This paper plane is flying around, hits something, it explodes like it was on fire. While this guy's sitting there drinking, you have this one guy who I think is actually Tim Hankel, who would write Chainsaw Master with Toby Hooper, just typing this poem very fast. On a typewriter. <clears throat> and then this camera, as if it's on drugs, like on the drug speed or something, is very quickly given this tour around this house and inside out. Like it was the Flash. Like the Flash had a fucking camera on him. I'm like, okay. You have this literally five, six minute scene where the camera is situated on this stairwell. And you just have people going up and down and up and down and having random conversations and going up and down the staircase. And like it's, it's jump cuts, but the camera's always on this fucking stairwell for like five minutes straight. And... I can't really say anything about the characters or their dialogue. One of them is Alan Danziger, who would be in Chainsaw Massacre. You have this one guy, this weird guy who lives in the basement, and he does all this weird stuff. Like, he has a sword fight with himself. And granted, the, the editing is really cool. Pretty damn clever. Because he'll be... He'll block, and then... The, how do I put it? Let's say this is the camera here. And the guy's here, and he's blocking. And as he blocks, all of a sudden, the edit, he'll be over here as if he's striking down with a sword. And as he strikes down, then it cuts back to him going back as if he's got hit. And then he goes back, and then it edits to this guy, blocks, and then he goes back as if he got hit. So he, you know, the way it was edited, as if he really was having a sword fight with himself. I thought, again, pretty cool. I'm like, that shows some pretty damn good editing. What the fuck it means to the movie, I guess that's up to interpretation. And then this light comes out of the wall, and this party thing. I forget what the hell you call it. That will, and the thing comes out. One of those comes out of the wall as if it was a ton, this bright light out of the wall. At one point, this couple's under this dome, this bubble, making out. At one point, this one couple is painting, and then the couple gets cleaned up and get naked, and it cuts to the room, and it's painting itself, and it's stop-motion animation with stars 
paint some colors when there's no one in there. Uh, this one scene, there's a very blurry sex scene. Uh, that guy in the basement gets in this sal salon hair dryer machine, and the camera pushes to the guy's eye, and I don't know what the fuck we're supposed to be seeing. It went by my head. This guy follows this woman with a dog in the woods, and just more and more balloons pop up. And then he's like covered in balloons, and he's walking. Maybe that's why I was okay with watching this, because I'm like, wow, when I watch movies like this, I don't have to take acid. I don't have to take acid, I just watch movies like this. And someone takes a car, smashes it stops and then in the foreground there's this anthill and he sets the car on fire then he gets naked and throws his cars his clothes into the car runs away and the fucking car blows up <laughs> some of the folks get married others go down the basement with that weird guy take the salon hair dryer thing go out into the woods set it up a couple another girl and that weird guy they all sit in the hair salon thing. And then they put these black bags over their body. Then they get sucked up into the machine. Then they, like, this water shit pours out. And they turn to smoke. See, when you smoke pot in the 60s and 70s, you got movies like this. When you do it today, you get movies like Yoga Hosers with Kevin Smith and... At least this was better than yoga hosers. So, that's not saying much, but yeah, and this again. Back then, when you smoked pot, you did movies like this. At least there were scenes that were unique. And I at least know what Toby Hooper's first film was like. I guess the only time this has been released officially was on the Arrow Blu-ray of Chainsaw Master 2, which I think is a three disc. This was, re this was released on there. Uh, I think my friend Michael CP has that, so he could confirm. But yeah, I found it on Vimeo to watch, and I actually watched it with a comment. There, it was a comment with Toby Hooper, so I watched it with that. People, like, what about the dialogue? Well. I had to hear bits and pieces, and really the dialogue were, wasn't much to to it. <clears throat> but yeah, eggshells, if, if what I described, just, this is not a film I would recommend, but hey, I was glad to watch it because it was Toby Hooper's first film, and... It's definitely more unique than a lot of films that come out nowadays, but anyway, it is what it is. <laughs> it's a pretty idea. I don't even think it's officially on a DVD or Blu-ray for anyone to buy to watch. So if somehow you see it, go good for you. But yeah, it was worth one watch, but I'll never watch it again. But I did. Again, 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 again. This movie is just weird. Very weird movie. But that's really all I can say about it. So thanks for watching. Take care. And next time I'll talk about the follow-up to Chainsaw Massacre, which was Eden Alive. So see you guys later.